Okay, so hello. You're going to talk right in here, and don't be scared. I won't be scared. Okay. <laughs> so could you start by introducing yourself and your role and where you're at? Sure. Um, my name's Karen Stevens. I'm a librarian at Somerville Public Library. I'm pretty new to the library, and uh, you can s catch me doing um, on the public desks, reference desk children's, as well as I uh, do things uh, behind the scenes in tech and, techno and tech services. Cool. And you're, you said like three weeks? Three weeks. <laughs> You've been at Somerville Public Library, and they just roped you into this. Yes. I like it. I like it. Diving in. Yes. Diving in. Well, we're happy to have you here. Well, I'm so glad thank to be you. Here. Thank you. And hello. Hello. And who are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. Um, I am Lily Sundell Thomas. I am also a librarian at the Somerville Public Library. I work at the reference desk. I do outreach and programming. Yay. Yeah. You are wonderful. I mean, the whole staff of the public library are some of my favorite people, like in general. But I really do, like, the, there's just been this, like, sweeping, like, team energy up at the library, and, and I feel it, and it's great. And I think um, there's a lot of really cool things happening there. Yeah, we love each other. A lot of stuff that's happening that, like, some people just don't know about. Oh, yeah, there's a ton of things people let's don't know let's about. Let's, like, hit, like, obviously we know the premise of what a public library is, and... I think some people have ideas about, like, challenges, which maybe we, maybe we could talk about some of those. But what are some of the unique assets of the library that maybe the, the average folk might not know about? And you guys can kind of popcorn this like an answer. Well, sure. Everyone thinks, oh, library full of books. So we got books. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just going gonna, gonna to face it boom like this because you're looking at me. Is that better? Boom. I love it. Awesome. Uh, we also have audiobooks and musical CDs and DVDs, all which can be borrowed. We have computers people can use for the internet and online databases. If you're researching your ancestry or doing a paper for cool. class. Cool. And hotspots. And we have a hotspot. We have one today. Yep. You guys have a Wi-Fi hotspot right now? Yeah, we used it to connect to the mobile library. <gasps> because you are doing what back here? <laughs> We're trying to. <laughs> um, sign people up for library cards and check out books. Um, so we've got our tech training laptop that we also use to do one-on-one -on -one technology training with patrons. And we have one of our mobile library hotspots. So you can get, it's called MiFi. Maybe MiFi, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Wi-Fi, but it's right. fine. Um, <laughs> empowering. So it's very empowering. It's empowering Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we also have iPads that you can check out. Cool. Yep. And we have uh, four guitars, a what? drum. See, this we is what is super kit. interesting. Oh yeah. So yeah. the amount of instruments. <laughs> Could we? Can we? Yeah. Like, can we? Like, do you know? Like, uh, there are two full size guitars, two three quarter size guitars, and a a drum. I think it's the, the how do you say? Like a, like a djembe, djembe? Yep. like a djembe, the yep. one that you put between like your legs. Exactly. And yeah, yeah. That yeah. One. Yep. That's awesome. Uh, the telescope? guitars. What oh, was that? Oh, we have a telescope. Yep. And we have a birding kit, which comes with binoculars and. Some bird a books. birding kit. So, how do you acquire these? Are you like, are these donations, or are people? Are you, is the library buying these, or how does this work? I think a lot of them are donations. Okay. Um, I think the musical instruments are mostly donations. I believe. I actually the the uh, telescope is before my time, but I know that many other libraries have gotten them with grants. Okay. Uh, through like the National Endowment for something for the arts, sciences, or arts. The NEA. Did you get something in your eyeball? Yes, I did. <laughs> this is the nature of live television. Sometimes you got to take one for the team and you, you get like a, <laughs> a something, something in, in your eye. If you are feeling uncomfortable, there is okay. a restroom inside. Please, please go help yourself. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. This is also about safety here. <laughs> safety. Uh, we also have uh, goggles. Uh, gang. <laughs> Goggles. That's what we need. We don't have goggles. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I was just <laughs> thinking about Lily's <laughs> safety over here. <laughs> well, she should be wearing um, I should be. sunglasses. I know. Yeah. I know. I got the sunglasses. There's in my actually eyes. some in my oh. office if you want to just uh. put them on. But. Uh, children's rooms c circulate some toys. Cool. So you can have toys you can take home. And um, I th I there was one other thing I was going to say, and I've forgotten it now. Oh, there's leapfrogs. Which, are they called leapfrogs? Leap pads. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And they're like, like small an interactive digi game digital devices for kids preloaded with games. That's awesome. That they can do. Yep. And how long and can individuals rent items. those for? Well, you'd have to ask somebody on circulation. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think it's two weeks. Two weeks? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Jim, if that's wrong. 
And is yeah. this pretty like common for libraries to be offering these types of like resources, or is it, or is this like a a budding like 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 goal for some? Do you think? Like we're really cool, but I mean, um, obviously we're in Somerville, so we're already like we're yeah. trendsetters here. Yeah. For those who are watching, it's true. We're kind of cool. That's why so many people are moving here. It's true. <laughs> Getting really a blessing pricey, and guys. a curse, huh? <laughs> a blessing and a curse. Um, <laughs> but we're not the only ones. I'll be honest. Okay. Yeah. All right. What? So what's your insight? Well, I mean, I've so I think the cooler libraries are doing it, you know. So I I worked <laughs> in some suburban libraries, which I won't name, that okay. didn't have these cool things. Um, but I I worked at the Forbes Library in Northampton, very cool community, and mm -hmm. we also had a lot of musical instruments. We didn't have a uh, telescope. Thank you. I just was going by this motion. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a telescope, so <laughs> I mean, it's sort of like what your community members are willing to give you, too. right? And so if people have, like, resources, like, instruments or really cool things that could be loaned through or donated, how would they go about that process? Do you know? Am I asking really difficult questions? I'm just asking questions I feel like someone might yeah. want to know. I might but they could probably just contact the library in general. Sure. Yeah, I think um, probably Kathy Piantagini, our fearless deputy director. Woo, woo, shout out to Kathy. And I hope woo. that she is live streaming right now. She better She's be. She's been all over that TV channel today. I saw <laughs> her on multiple. She does the update and then the group, the fall the fall talk, oh, yes. library talk, which we have to do winter one coming mm -hmm. up very Into soon. It. Yes. I've been reading up. Oh, good. So you're preparing? Mm. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Have you watched any of these? I have. Oh, good. Because if you didn't, we were going to have a 10 second moment of where we didn't talk to you. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally <laughs> watched the whole thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've never done that. But so that's all physical stuff. We also have to talk about the digital stuff yes. offered by the yes. library. But the physical stuff is cool, though. Like, physical that's super interesting to me. Well, we have audio books and ebooks through Overdrive. Okay. But we also offer um, an app called Hoopla. Or Hoopla. And that you can get streaming video and music and audiobooks and ebooks. Cool. Hoopla. And it's an app. And a website. Interesting. So, so how does that work? So you just like bring your phone and then like you download it on your phone and you put in your library card number. You could do it on the bus. That's so awesome! Yeah. Hoopla on the fly. Oh yeah. yeah. And then go you Hoopla. Can you can watch a TV show. Cool. You know, this when is, you're not this is for it. very interesting. I'm actually yeah. going to take advantage of this. Yes. The MiFi and the Hoopla. I'd be just you know living life. Yes. And then we just got a new uh, app or Free. online service called Flipster. Which Ooh. is magazines. Okay. So if you have a Somerville Public Library card, you can access, um, I think, about a dozen magazines. Awesome. And it's like you're flipping through. It's an app, and it's on the w on the web. Okay. But that's, you know, these things are Somerville only things. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so not part of, like, the whole, like, Minuteman right. system. Right, yeah. Okay. So there are some things that are Minuteman, some things that are Somerville. So and for those who don't know about the Minuteman um, network, what is that? Oh, well, it's a network of... Oh, I don't know how many libraries. libraries. Many 30 libraries. 30-ish. 30 30-ish. We get Cambridge. Um, we've got Arlington. It's a whole bunch of libraries locally. Um, and the deal is that your library card is a Miniman library card. It will work at any of those libraries. You can cool. check out items from any of the libraries. You can um, request that items from those libraries get brought over to the Somerville Library. If you happen to be next to the Arlington Public Library, the Robbins Library, you could return a Somerville book there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We get deliveries every weekday. Um, so they take books away. They, they bring books back. And then we also subscribe to some um, databases through the whole network. So like That's um, great. earlier, we talked about Overdrive, and that is a Minuteman resource. So everybody shares that collection. Um, and then there's some other, you know, like the online encyclopedias we share with all of Minuteman. Very cool. Yeah. I great. like it. Yeah. I like it. Okay. So we talked about physical items. Physical items. We talked about digital items. Some digital items. How yeah. about some of the programming that's going woo woo. on? Woo Yep. Totally Do you like that segue? No, huh. Yeah, that was really good. Thank you. And I was thinking I'm a good recapper. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> um, we, well, we just wrapped up Summer Rebel Reads, which was awesome. Um, it was a month-long program where we encouraged people from Somerville to all read the same book. Um, our book this year was El Defo by mm -hmm. C.C. Bell, which mm -hmm. is a graphic novel, young adult, sort of middle grade graphic novel about this young girl who becomes deaf. Mm -hmm. um, she isn't born that way. She she gets just, uh, just something happens and she okay. becomes deaf. Um, you anyway, don't want to give away. No, I don't want to yeah, give away the right. details. That's of course. good. You can read it yourself, guys. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, she sort of reimagines herself as a superhero, as a way of kind of coping with it but also because she ends up having some really cool things that she can do 
uh, like she can hear things with her um, equipment, uh, her hearing aids. It's anyway. It's kind of like superhuman, yeah, like superpowers. Yeah, like she kind of has superpowers, and and it's pretty great. And she wears a cape in her in her reimagination. So we did a lot of awesome programming around that. We had a comic book workshop. We had. Um, 70s themed party. Awesome. We had a lot of book discussions. And we had some, some ASL training too, right? AS, two ASL classes, which had an awesome turnout. Wow. Um, so that's past programming, but we've got fun stuff coming up in the fall too. And you just launched um, the first, it was the Books and Brews. We just had the second the Books second and Brews. One. The second one. The second one. Tuesday. I didn't see you there. Eric I Jones. was not there. We were waiting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just kidding. I, I wanted to be there. <laughs> I was doing something. I understand. I understand. I, <laughs> I had was to shopping. Be there, so I was shopping for a wedding that I'm officiating. Okay. My best friend's All wedding right. in three weeks. We'll see you next week. Sorry. I mean next time. <laughs> next, next month. I will. I'll be there. I promise. You November can count 28th. On me. And what's the book? So the next. And what book? happens there? Yeah. Tell okay. Us let all, me tell, tell you us all of it. So um, what happens there? Basically, you read a book. We all are reading the same book. Americana was the first book. Um, the second book was The Stranger in the Woods, which is about this guy. You probably have heard this story. Uh, I talked about it in one of our uh, the, the book chats. So this guy that just like goes up into Maine for, and lives there for 20 years. That was our second book. People had a lot to say about this. Um, then the third book is going to be White Teeth by Zadie Smith. We let people vote on the books. I'm sorry, it's not White, Smith, White Teeth. It's Swing Time. <laughs> by Swing by time by Zadie Smith. Swing by time by Mix, Zadie Smith. Mixed up. Oh, okay. Books. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. This is cool. a. This is you know. This is a fine space for. F- we allow failures. You can read both. Yeah. Exactly. We can talk about it all. And then we're gonna. Yeah. You're just talking <laughs> about it all. This is great. <laughs> but anyway, you read the book. You get a beer. Yeah. You show up. Cool. And then you talk about it. Is it like an inform? Is it like kind of like like a drumming circle? Like no. everyone comes and it's like no. one big circle. It's not like that at all. So what does it look like? Tell so me about. Uh, the, so tell me about the space. Been to, have you been to Aeronaut? Yes. So it's in the... A little too often, but yes. Yeah, it's great there. They have so (laughs) many cool community things going on. They're super support. Yeah, shout out to Aeronaut because they're super supportive for a lot of the stuff that we do here at Sonoma Media Center, but also just in general. They respond to my emails so quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Holmes is my one of my best friends. Michael, whoever you are. Michael's also fantastic. Yeah, he's great. Great organizer. Very responsive. Really responsive. Anyway, so we just set up in that back room there with all the tables and... um, Actually, Cassie Gracer and I, who are running the program, Mm -hmm. were really blown away. So the first program, people just came in. They sat right down. They started just discussing the book. Cool. We didn't have to do any facilitating. We did print out questions. Oh, cool. Um, but just in case there was like a case, lull. Yeah. yeah. We didn't want things to be awkward for the people. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but they weren't awkward. People just sat right down. They started chatting. It was kind of amazing. Cool. So yeah. just like informally, they're just kind of coming in. Maybe they yeah. have a beverage. Yeah. They also have seltzer there so if you don't drink beer you can also bring in your own non-alcoholic beverages and snacks snacks, just for folks who are like ooh, brewery uh, but i'm like no you can do you can literally bring in so much like outside stuff which is nice yeah Yeah. um um, cool so then people were just like walking around talking talking about the book they mostly sat at tables and talked about the books okay we were really we were kind of amazed that people really wanted to talk about the books that's all they wanted to do they just sat right down they got to business they talked about the books and then it was over at seven. Everybody kind of, kind of parted ways the first time. The second time, people lingered a little bit longer. And okay. Aeronaut has Tuesday night trivia. Oh, right. So I don't mean to brag. but oh, um, did you? Well, Are you going to pe- brag? I'm going to brag. she is going to brag. Not, yeah, it's not a, pers- hearing. Not a personal hearing. brag because I didn't actually do this. But some of uh, the people that came to Books and Brews then formed a trivia team. Again, it's at Aeronaut. And like I said, we're going to be reading Swing Time. Could we just come if we don't read the book? Yes. <laughs> you can. Just come to hang out with your local Oh, librarian. who's here now? Oh, hi, I'm sure. Welcome well, back, Heather McCormick. Call. I'm just glad. I'm glad that I saw over there. I'm sorry. What is your name? Can you remind me? Oh, Lily. Lily. Awesome. So Lily over here, I, when I was talking about young adult fiction, I could see you over there going <laughs> like this. So so what are your favorite young adult fiction books? Oh, man. That you're checking Hard out these hitting days? Hard-hitting questions. Because I actually yeah. wanted to, I want to find a new book, you know? <laughs> Shoot. Shoot. Oh, I know. Sorry. Did I put you on the spot? I'm going to go tag team out to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. okay. Well, right. goodbye. Um, <laughs> don't go anywhere. I'm trying to think of, like, oh, man, I don't know how I forget these things. And Well, of course, you know, we all love Harry Potter. We'll call mm-hmm. that young adult. We all love. Let me see. Let me think. Okay. Never mind. What we you, get wait, <laughs> well, well, you say something you love, and maybe I can. Sure. Well, I really like um, 
There was one that one, one of my young people showed me. What's up? I said I thought of one already. I just oh, needed okay. you to talk. Oh, okay. It's like, oh, yeah. Um, actually, so I don't know if this co is considered young adult fiction. Actually, it's it's not really. It's a, it's a graphic novel that is for young people that I recently was exposed to that's about the roller derby. Cool. Oh. And like girls oh, roller yeah. girl? Roller, roller girl. girl. Yeah. I that thought that was, was the fantastic. coolest thing ever. One of my 12-year-old my BFFs was showing me um, her copy of that, yeah. and then she decided she wanted to join the roller derby, which you can actually do yeah as a young person yep, there's a jung junior young roller derby however unfortunately it's in lynn i know and so nobody it. can <laughs> she can't nobody get can there. there so oh. but you know i tried to like figure out some carbon so like that author has a new book out <gasps> oh really called, um all's fair in middle school and Ooh. it's about a girl who's been homeschooled um under the auspices of ren fair so her parents are Renfair people. Oh my She's goodness. been homeschooled, and then she decides she wants to go to school wow. in, at the at middle school. Wow! So she starts at middle school, and she's got her Renfair life going on at the same time. Oh so my it's goodness! Sort of all about you. Remember middle school? Oh man! Yeah, I, that's what it's yeah, about. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I think that's so important. I mean, I, I think it's really, really important for, especially for middle schoolers, to be able to read um, and and ex you know read fiction that empathizes with where they're at. And I, I notice, you know, I think the trends in young adult fiction are really positive trends where they're you know uh, much more inclusive in terms of LGBT characters. And I've um, isn't there a recent book that came out about a trans a trans teenager? I'm trying to think of which one I'm thinking of. Well, there's the well, there's George, which is sort of an elementary school middle grade book, mm -hmm. and then there's um, that memoir that came out. I, I am Jazz. Or I am Jazz. Yeah, yeah. call me yeah. Jazz or call something. Me, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really it's really cool. It's really cool. I mean, I know for me, like those types of stories when I was young, um, really made a difference because I could feel like you know, especially I think in middle it's school. It's important for everyone to see themselves exactly. reflected in what they're reading. Yeah, for right. sure. You know, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and 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 more diverse voices, more diverse yeah. um, authors. I mean, still have a ways to go, but I think yes. that we're making you know we're making some progress, and I imagine you guys are pretty intentional about featuring, um, oh, yeah. you know, authors of color and um, you know, uh, books that are that are um, including more diverse um, groups of young people in the profiles. For sure. Yes. Yeah. So I love fantasy. Okay. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about what. So what I was thinking are. like, I love Graceling by um, Chris cool. Christine or Christina Cashwars, like really awesome fantasy about kind of like a, a badass. Can I say that on the radio? Yeah. Lady. Um, Really awesome. And then actually, I was thinking graphic novels. Have you read Nimona? Nimona, no. Noelle Stevenson. She was behind Lumberjanes as well. Oh, I know about really Lumberjanes. Yeah. Nimona's really pretty awesome. Yeah. That's wicked cool. Nimona's yep. really good. It's maybe middle school and up. Yeah. Cool. All really right. Good. I'll check that out. Yeah. I'll check that out. I like, I love young adult fiction and also like in movie, in um, TV shows too. I just yeah. started watching Riverdale. Love oh it. Oh my God, I love it. It's so good, I right? Love it. It's new so good. Out, out I know. Soon. Brand new season just came out and I'm like yep. uh yeah I'm like just watching the first season right now but like I've been having our you know conversations um you know with folks because I think that you know I always it's always seen like young adult fiction or whatever it's like oh it's so cheesy or it's, it's like not intellectual or it's not it shouldn't be a guilty pleasure those stories matter like yeah. just because they're young people they don't you know that's they're not as important like come on now or they're, they're somehow cheesy like i think that you can tell really compelling stories and like yeah maybe it is a little cheesy but so is star trek so is like all sorts of stuff that we watch G game of thrones you know oh my not god a fan. right me neither <laughs> like, like whatever it's yeah it's whatever give me like some high school drama yes. and like you know some nuances of like you know how to y have like relationships with people outside your class background and how, how to, to navigate like in the world how to navigate in the world and like yeah. because the no, secret is that, secret right? is is that we haven't figured it out yet just because i'm no longer a young well i mean like i'm 28 i don't know you know adulting i'm adulting it's right so i'm trying so i'm figuring it out but yeah i think that's i think that's also partially because we just don't value young people as much as mm. we should so i think what you guys are are doing at the library. Actually, I just kind of assumed you were working with young people at the library. No. Okay. So, where what are you what are your roles at the library? I'm sorry if Erica already asked you guys this, but I'll ask you again. All right. Well, my name's Karen. Yeah. And um, I've been at the library now for 3 weeks. Uh, count wow, 3 whole weeks. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Woo -woo. First 2 weeks to or 4 days this. long. <laughs> um, 
And so I do some front-facing, you know, reference desk, a children's room, teen room. Nice. And then I do some stuff in, uh, behind the scenes. Great. In tech and um, technical services. Wonderful. So. Oh. Great. And I um, am also an adult librarian, sort of. But I also, so I am programming and outreach. Is, those are my two main things. So I um, mostly do adult programming. Um, but actually, Karen and I are, are starting to do some all ages programming as Wonderful. well. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, and then, but you talk about what the kind new of program adult programming? Yeah. And what kind of which the, one? The one that's based on the da- Danish word I cannot pronounce. Oh, I'm not sure that I can either. Higa, Huga, Huga. H Y G G E. Yep. It's getting cozy. Have you heard about this? No, I have no idea what you guys are talking about, and so I want to know. So, Huga. I've, so the program's called Getting Cozy at the Library because I didn't want to make anyone else try to pronounce that name, that word. Um, but it's this sort of Danish concept of getting really cozy and like kind of staying happy in the winter time. And the who doesn't Dan- need that? What, is it Danish? Is it? Th- oh, oh my gosh! I just learned about a term called a fika. I'm oh, not yeah. sure if that's is that Danish too. That I think is Swedish. Maybe it's Swedish. And that's and I just the having the coffee in the afternoon. Yeah, with the that pastries. they have everybody oh. takes a break. Yeah, yes, in yeah. the Take afternoon, and it's called a fika. Yeah. And yes. we have them in a class, and I'm tfing over at um, the ed school at Harvard. We all have a fika. Cool. In yes. the middle of our class. Uh, why don't we do that more often? Why don't right? we have fikas all? the time it's i don't know anyway sorry i didn't mean to yeah. <laughs> oh, conflate denmark with sweden <laughs> and i know they are different countries and they're <laughs> interesting cons but i think the the connecting thread was this like concept of self-care totally it's right the self-care program and, so. and that yeah. it's like built into certain cultures and it doesn't seem to be built into ours so we need to create Agreed. i'm working on it yeah i'm trying to make it happen for so Summerville. getting cozy the at the library. library yeah getting cozy at the library is it's an adult program because and it's um it's it's a cozy, crafty program. It's awesome. It's going to be awesome. And I don't think that adults get to craft enough. You know, kids get to have all the fun. Yeah. So uh, the first one will be this Saturday, actually. Wow. Ne- not tomorrow, but the next Saturday. Okay. Um, it's going to be from 2.30 to 4.30 at the Central Library. And we're going to be just hanging out, drinking cocoa, having snacks, I listening to it. a playlist that I'm going to make, I promise. <laughs> um, it's okay. You've got a whole week. <laughs> they'll be crafting, knitting, and it's. I think it's going to be really fun, and we're going to be doing it monthly throughout the winter. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I think, again, like the library, the public libraries, uh, similarly to, you know, what we do here at, commu- at um, several, you know, media center, um, it's a community space where it's not based on consumption. It's not based on money and needing to purchase something. I feel like so many of our, like, quote unquote community spaces are actually pretty corporate spaces. You know, it's like, oh, we go to the mall and hang out. Well, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, well, well nobody does that anymore. It's anyway. so easy to just stay at home and order Amazon. When do you interact right. with other people? Right, exactly. That's what the library's here for. That's right. what you guys are community here for. Community media yep. and all of the stuff that we do, yeah, is, is trying people to bring face people to together. Because guess what? We still are humans and we still <laughs> need that stuff, regardless of <laughs> totally, totally. everything else and how easy and convenient. What made you guys want to be librarians? Ooh. Oh, that's a tough one. You better go first. It's got to go back. But it's a good one. It's Mm. a good one. Chapter one. (laughs) (laughs) The boy who lived. (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, I really fell in love with books with Harry Potter. So (laughs) we were joking about that. We've been saying chapter one, the boy who lives. Yes. But it's true. But it's it's true. true. I mean, that's really, I was like, I mean, I think you maybe are the same age as me. Yeah. So um, I like sort of grew up with the Harry Potters and that's sort of how I really fell in love with books. Yeah, definitely. And then it's sort of, you know, I was working, I was working at a coffee shop. Um, for a long time, and I really love just dealing with people all day long. It's just the people who re- grew up with it. I, don't, I think because they don't have, have to wait. You don't have to wait. You, you got to make them wait. Yeah. Oh, that was like was a, a lot. Oh. There, was, there was a lot. It going was so on. hard. You just it had to reread. I just remember also like being at summer camp because it was yeah. like right around. They would come out in the summer. It was yes. my birthday. And then it every year. When when's your birthday? June thirtieth. Is that Harry there. Potter's birthday too? No, no. Okay. Um. Yeah. Oh, it's called. Hey, John. Oh, Hi, by the way, it's John. I'm uh, the in- I'm one of the uh, interns here at uh, SMC. Where are you from? I'm from Connecticut. I go to school at Emerson College. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um. Yeah, John. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, Erica. Uh, <laughs> you live in Somerville? <laughs> no, I I, uh, I live on campus. In, oh, nice. Uh, at Emerson, yeah. Nice. You like Somerville? Oh, it's great up here. Perfect. Yeah. Um, there's like so much cool stuff to do around here. It's always a lot of fun. Oh. Am I being quiet? That's out of the ordin- that's out of the ordinary for me. <laughs> yeah, no, you're doing good. Um, you're doing great. So, yes. it was Harry Potter transformative for you too, or what books were transformative for you? Um, 
well, for me, Harry Potter was, I, me personally, I don't read that often. Um, Harry Potter is like one of the only books. You're saying this around librarians, John. <laughs> That's fine. Please, with me, Sorry. you know. <laughs> I feel safe. So. It's a safe space. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's one of the one of the only book series I like read beginning to end. Um, the other one of the other ones being um, the the Percy Jackson book. You know, the oh, Lightning those are Thief. fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah, those are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's partly because you know I I like read I like reading about fantasy. Um, yeah. Me too. With you. Um, and, you know, those are very fantastical books, mm -hmm. uh, especially with Harry Potter. You know, fighting dragons. Oh yeah. Destroying a, an old flat-faced man who's where's his nose i don't know where is it? they were moved into the special effects i guess yep. i don't know ask the effects team <laughs> um yeah <laughs> um yeah i i'm more so i think well I, i'd probably say about equal between uh the films and the books for harry potter um sure. because they both had like different influences on you know what i want to be because right now i'm i'm studying at emerson for um you know, VMA and movie making. So, oh, okay. so the actual like Harry Potter films have definitely yeah. been a big inspiration. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I can never go. I, you know, I can never go wrong rereading those books. You got to reread. Yeah, I know they're. I'm, I'm due for a reread myself. Oh, me too. Yeah. We we have um we have the full series back home, so I've been to pick me those too. up. And it's really interesting to think about in terms of filmmaking what they what they took to tell the story and what of the books they left out because as you go on in the yeah. books. You know, there's a storyline in the movie, and then there's a million storylines in the books that don't get get covered. And I think as as a budding movie maker, that's an important thing to think about. Yeah, How yeah. I took a whole I took a whole are. class on that in college. It was actually on really Harry Potter. No, about oh. film adaptation <laughs> and comparing. Actually, like we studied like Ghost World, the graphic novel, oh. versus Ghost World, the yeah, movie. Yeah. It was really interesting. That's we cool. talked about how you make those decisions from going mm. from one to the other. Also, the name of the store in Maynard, it's called Charmed. Oh, Charmed. I like that. Okay. Oh, interesting. Like the it's TV got show. it's all Harry Potter merchandise and a tea room oh. and a wands. A tea room. That's and cute. And wands. Very nice. Buy some wands. See, I, I've, been, I've been to the, um, the, the Harry Potter amusement area at Universal Studios. Um, and let me tell you, they, they did not skimp on anything. Um, because it, it, one, one portion of the park is... Um, it's uh, Gringotts, so uh, no, not, well, yeah, part of it's Gringotts, um, and that's like where like one of the main major attractions is, and then you know the whole the rest of that part is Diagon Alley. Nice. So you've got all like the shops, um, you know, like the bookshop, the wand shop. Um, the other part of the park is um, Hogsmeade. Oh, so cool. you got um, you have, you have, like the Weasley Brothers uh, joke shop there. Mm -hmm. um, for some scary. reason, Ollivander's wand shop is Ooh. there. Um, it, it's really cool because it, it, it's like an interactive thing yeah. where you like wait in line for a little bit and they bring you in and they have a gentleman playing the part of Ollivander and they'll pick random people from the audience to have like a have like a special wand chosen wow. for them. Yeah. I was never awesome. that kid, but you know I did no, see yeah. I did hey. see other people. Your time uh, could still come. It can still come. Yeah, it's that's an, true. It's totally possible. <laughs> All right. um, the wand does choose the wizard. It so does. That's true. <laughs> um, and they also, uh, you know, and they have like the, all the wands in the gift shop too, so that's kind of neat. But the best part is that they actually serve, you know, like butter beer, oh, okay. and it's it's the um, it's not like the actual butter beer itself. That's the good part. It's they give you this sort of like creamy, frothy foam oh. on the top. Oh, it's delicious! Huh. Wow. Yeah, you can now get it. I, yeah. I need to go. I'm into it. I gotta check it out. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up because we have the Somerville cool. Katie from the Somerville Journal is gonna come over and say hello. Yeah. But first, I just want to give you guys a chance. Um, to plug anything else that you have coming up, any projects you're working on, programs that are upcoming that you want to put on our radar, um, or just nice words that you have to say <laughs> about community media. Ready, go. All right. Freedom to read. Woo, woo. Woo. Yeah. Reading's, reading's good. Reading is like a massage for your brain. Well, you know, we were talking about earlier about how everyone should see themselves reflected in the media. It's the same. Community media is the same thing. Whatever media you can consume, books, television, you know, everybody should have the opportunity to see themselves and who they are reflected in what they watch and read Absolutely. and listen to. Oh, oh no. Oh there are guys, somebody grab all those. Yeah. And we'll go. thank you, John. John, saving oh. the day. John, saving the day. All right. Thank you so much. And Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Yeah. And we love community media. We love the Somerville Public Library. <laughs> and Yay. community media day. Yay. Happy community, Happy community media, media day. day.